Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered what can be found inside a glacier? Just a few weeks ago in late September, 205,000 pounds worth of jewels were discovered poking out of Bossons Glacier on Mont Blanc. There were nearly 100 jewels neatly packed into little sachets, some of which were labelled made in India. It's thought that this treasure originated from one of two Air India flights that crashed into the side of the mountain in 1950 and 1966. But why has it only just been found? Well, when a plane crashes into a glacier, the heat from the engine and of course any raging fire will melt to the ice. Before long, the plane and its content will sink into the water and be entombed within the glacial structure itself when it refreezes. In this manner, all sorts of artefacts have been swallowed up by glaciers, from newspapers, letters, shoes, parts of a plane and even human remains. After a crash, it may be decades before items are discovered as they come to the surface along the path of the frozen river. One of the greatest things to be found inside a glacier was Utzi the Iceman, and he's believed to have died 5,000 years ago. His body was somehow encased in a glacier near the Italian-Austrian border, and it's been preserved extremely well. So much so that scientists have determined that his last few meals contained red deer and chamois, a type of mountain goat. And by analysing the pollen and dust grains preserved within him, they even know where he grew up. But it's not just human artefacts that can be found within the body of the ice. As the glacier rolls down the hill, it picks up debris and rocks. In fact, boulders the size of houses can be found within the glacier. Most of the rock debris is found within the lower portion of the glacier. This is where it rubs against the ground like sandpaper, eroding the hillside and carving out a spectacular glacial valley. There are also features known as moulins, which are essentially giant vertical tunnels that run through the ice. When a crevasse opens up across a surface stream of meltwater, it flows into the chasm, carving out a cylindrical shaft that can be hundreds of metres deep. It's a waterfall within the ice, and this in itself creates another glacial feature, the cane. Water picks up silt as it travels along the surface of the glacier and then it deposits it at the bottom of the moulin and this creates a conical mound of mud. They can actually be found on top of glaciers too, evidence that the ice was once much higher. All we're seeing now is the base of the moulin. Of course, the water from these moulin has to go somewhere, so it percolates through the glacier in a giant underground plumbing system. Rivers gush through the ice, carving out caves. In fact, it's thought that this extra water helps to lubricate the glacier as it moves along the hill. But there is something else, something magical, hidden inside a glacier. Glacial ice isn't like your average freezer ice, instead it's compressed by great pressures, which actually makes it melt at a slower rate. But as it's compacted, the air bubbles are squeezed out and larger ice crystals form. This makes the ice very clear, and when the light shines through it, it refracts, creating a rainbow inside the glacier. How cool is that? Subscribe to Earth Unplugged because soon I'm going to be exploring rainbows in more detail and I've got a great experiment for you. See you soon. Have you ever considered if Mount Everest is actually the tallest mountain? Have you ever considered how much water there is? We think of our planet as a watery place, the blue planet. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, and in fact, water is unique as the only natural compound that occurs in all three states. But if we scooped it all up and sculpted that water into a sphere, how big would that sphere be?